Okay, Sisters fans, we're talking about last night's episode, Season 5, Episode 14, Fair Game, and negative 3 out of 10. I know that's a bit, well, that's really low. Originally, I was going to give it like a 1 out of 10, but when I was doing my live stream and talking about it out loud, also, you know, looking at other people and what they had to say, where I had agreed, it's a negative 3. Don't get me wrong, after the first scene, after, you know, we switched over from Zach and Fatima's house, that, that could have been it. You know, that, that could have been the last thing I saw. I would have given it possibly maybe a 4 out of 10, give or take. But as the episode went on, I kept docking points. <laughs> and look, I know it's really low, but this... Look, remember how I said last week was skippable? This week falls in the same category because it just... Yet again, how many times have I said it on the channel? Since like maybe season three. When you step outside of the realm of these Atima related content, the rest of the show falls apart. It, it really does. It really, really does. Let's talk about all the other stuff before we get to the Zach and Fatima. I could talk about that in less than two minutes. Let, let's get to it. Conversation kicks off. Zach, you know, mentions... Three grand a month in child support. Karen kind of scoffs at that because, he, um, you know what, Zach? Because he makes a point. He says, you know what? Well, Fatima and I talked about it. And, you know, I just want to say that even though we don't know if the child is mine yet, it's a very responsible thing to talk about this now. That way there's no kind of conflict or whatever when the baby actually gets here. So... I want to be in the child's life and, you know, provide whatever is needed. And Karen's like, oh, so y'all talked about the kid, the baby that I'm carrying inside of me. Here's the problem. Zach confirmed this at the beginning of season four. When Karen said she was pregnant, she took like four pregnancy tests and she was putting it all on Zach. When he even mentioned Aaron, she scoffed at that. No, you, it's your baby. He said straight up. Let's make some things clear. I'm not leaving Fatima. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean we're getting back together, Karen. And whatever it is you need, let me know. Because I'll be there to provide for the child. So all of this now seemingly being a new revelation isn't that big of a deal. Because Zach already confirmed that he would be willing to do this kind of stuff. He wants to be in the kid's life as well as provide as needed. Karen all of a sudden, no, 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 it's yours. And then we go to the credit scenes. I'm like, what the hell? I mean, the opening credits. I'm like, ain't no time for the, th look, I love the theme song, but this is one of them times where you could take the theme song out. We don't need it. We don't need it. But she pretty much throws in the same thing. Hey, it's yours. Because, you know, after he says 3000 a month, she starts to act like Heather. You know, that those two, that nice car. Oh, actually, those two nice cars and this house and everything. But she does get to the point where she says, you know what? No. um, I don't need anything from you because, you know, I have my own money. And Zach should have retorted, yeah, that $77,000 I gave you. But whatever. So she says, I don't need you in the baby's life. I don't need your money. I don't need any of this. So she basically talks her shit and gets up. Case in point, she says Zach is the baby. And even Fatima's like, you know, but the test isn't that accurate. I mean, it isn't 100% and it's still too close. Seven days is, you know, hey, it's Zach's baby. Because, you know, my I did what you suggested. Because, yeah, Fatima told her mom who told Karen to get the test done. But uh, that's not the same as DNA. Also, she didn't mention the dates, just like she didn't mention the dates with Aaron. So really, um, she's just pointing fingers. But not th that was one of the main issues with the episode. Plenty of times where characters should have said something specific, but they didn't. Like, okay, Zach is the you say Zach is the father based on the test, but we're still going to get a DNA test. That should have been said right up front. But Karen gets to the point where she even mentions that damn desk. About how apparently that desk design or whatever that um, is over in the corner. That's the same kind of desk that Zach promised for Karen so she could study. I'm guessing in Karen's uh, case like business, you know, because of her salon. 
but we know in Fatima's case it's for law. But you know, Zach, you know, Fatima was like trying to get things back on track. Look, look, look. Let's focus on why you're here so we can talk about that as opposed to anything else. But, you know, after the arguments are back and forth, I got to admit, it wasn't as bad as I expected. You know, I was expecting a lot of yelling and back and forth, but Zach composed himself pretty well. And Fatima, you know, she had to speak her piece, but I don't blame her because Karen did what Karen does. She will, she did conduct herself better than I expected, but it was just a constant shade and whatnot. And Fatima called her out for that because what does Karen do? She will talk her shit and she will leave. Once her piece is done, she will leave. Ain't nobody else got time to speak. Nobody else can speak. Karen's going to talk her shit and leave. And it's funny because how many times does she say that about Zach? That's what he does. If he hears something or if you say something he doesn't like, he leaves. That's Karen. And she also, like I said, talk her shits and leaves. But Fatima stopped her and I'm thinking to myself, technically... If Fatima didn't stop Karen, she wouldn't have seen the ring. But here's the thing, though. Karen said before she left, here's what we're going to do. Oh, because actually she sees the ring first. And then she goes up to grab it. And it's like, first of all, this ain't your house. Quit touching shit. Secondly, I love how Zach, no hesitation. Are you two engaged? Yes, we are engaged. And then he reached and grabbed the ring from her. I love that. But somebody on live chat said something that I'm like, you know what? This would have made this episode a 10 out of 10. If he would have put that ring on Fatima's finger on the spot, that would have been perfect. So then now Karen, oh, 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 no, 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 no. I see what this is. You, 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 you want to talk about child support and what now? And, you know, to get me to sign something. So, okay, I get what it is. You want me out of the way. You want the easy way. And then he's like, that's not fair. And it's not fair because she is once again playing the victim. She's accusing Zach. She's accusing Zach of kind of pushing her and the baby aside so he can have the easy life with his new soon-to-be wife. That is not what's happening at all. Zach is trying to come up with a compromise. So when the baby comes, if it is his, there's no confusion about what's going on. And Karen even said before the ring, don't worry, I'm not going to sue you or anything because I don't want anything. So then she goes on to say, why don't you write us some sort of agreement or whatever and then pass it off to Andy to look over it and then she'll give it to me and then I'll sign it and we're done. And then she storms out. And that's it. So after that, you know, um, they leave to go over to Andy's penthouse and um, Zach and Fatima talk. Very good scene. Very good emotional scene between the two. Uh, Zach is kind of giving her a way out and Fatima doesn't like this insecurity, but it's the right thing to do. And I can understand why Zach is feeling the way he feels, because this is too much for anybody to deal with. So you deserve someone better than me. So if you want to step away, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. But um, Fatima reassures him that, look, I don't judge you for what you did in the past. I judge you on how you treat me. The fact that, yeah, you made some mistakes, but the way he's handling it now shows that he's a good man or he's trying to at least be a better man. The old Zach wouldn't have given a damn about Karen and how she felt. It's the fact that Zach is trying. That it's the effort that he's putting into it that makes Fatima love him. And I love that. That was a, I ain't gonna lie, I kind of teared up. This was a good scene, a very good scene. But this is when the episode falls apart. It really falls apart. So, and also, yeah, Karen's the whole thing. Look, I can't help it. I throw shade. No, Karen, you're a bitch. That's all it is. I mean, you know, I can't help it. You know, I throw shade. It just happens. No, no. Because see, Zach is trying to do better. So we can see the change in him. Karen ain't trying to do nothing. She... That's just the way I am. That is bullshit. This is somebody else's house you're sitting in and you're acting rude. Because remember when Fatima came over to Karen's apartment, you know, Karen was like, why are you looking at me like that, Fatima? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not looking at you like anything. I'm just sitting here paying attention. And then Fatima calls her out for rightfully or rightfully calls her out for throwing shade and giving Fatima attitude. And they're just trying to be civil about the entire situation. So, yeah. Um, okay. So before going over to Andy's, 
we actually get a scene that puzzles me because based on the promo, it seemed like, you know, Karen was going to Aaron's house, but no, she stops by the basketball court and, you know, he goes over there to talk to her and she's all cordial and everything. Well, before she gets out of the car, she calls Pam to say, I'm coming over to the hair salon to make sure everything's okay. Pam reassures her that, look, don't worry. Everything is good. Only one more client is left and they're being handled right now. I'll make sure everything is cut off. The alarm systems. I'll send you videos, everything basically to keep you from coming down here because I got this. And she does confirm that if the place goes up in smoke, they, they do have insurance. So keep that in mind. But basically, um, Aaron comes up and she's all, hey, how are you? Um, I'm doing good. Yeah, are you okay? And then Karen's just saying, she... She's basically being an Aaron in this situation, being overly sweet, want to know how his day was. Are you okay? You feeling good? The game's going well. Uh, what's this all about, Karen? So he basically is like, oh, well, hey, I just wanted to thank you for being consistent and being kind and whatnot. And before she can leave, he's like, okay, I got, okay, flag on the play. Let's rerun this. So this, this, this ain't right. What's really going on, Karen? I just came back from Zach and Fatima's. Oh, I see, I see, I see. How'd that go? It's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, it's good. But, um, you coming over tonight? Absolutely. I wish Aaron was a bit more, oh, you want me to come over tonight? As opposed to just, oh, yeah, because here we go. I mean, hell, like she said, consistent. As in, how did you know I would be here at the basketball court? Oh, you're like clockwork. Yeah, basically, he's the safe guy that you friend zone because after you ran after Tyrone and Tyrone has moved on with someone else, you want to go back to old reliable Aaron. And that's a damn shame. But in any case, he agrees to come over. I'll bring the ice cream and those hands. Oh, you know, I'm bringing the hands. Yeah, for a foot rub. And I'm like, OK, she knows what it is. You know what it is. So eventually, um, OK, I'll just skip over to this part real quick. Calvin gets a call from Maurice, jokes, banter, yada, yada, yada. Hey, I'm gay, so I'm going to talk about I need a man as opposed to I need a lawyer as well, blah, 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 blah. And the conversation shifts gears to Sabrina talking to Andy. Calvin's going to give, you know, Maurice Andy's phone number, but there really is no need for that because, first of all, Sabrina needs to talk to Andy to confirm there's anything she can do at all. And then from there... You know, Maurice is still skeptical of Sabrina getting out and not him, so he's throwing shade. And guys, I don't give a shit about this. I love you, man. No, you don't. If you love me, you would have gave me some. Maurice, this is not the time for that. Look, I will call you tomorrow when you get another phone call so we can sort this thing out. That's really all it is, folks. There's nothing to talk about here. All right. Hell, might as well go back to Zach and Fatima real quick. So... Zach, well, Fatima opens up the documents and Zach said he didn't want to look at them. And here we go with Fatima again. And look, I agree, Zach, you can't ignore your problems. They just don't go away like this when you ignore them. But Fatima should have at least respected his wishes not to open the papers tonight. Should have been a compromise. Look, we just went through an emotional moment right now. Maybe we should wait until tomorrow to open the paperwork. Enough said. But um, she opens them up and Heather is suing him for $500,000, which makes no sense damn sense whatsoever somebody on um youtube i mean yeah my youtube live was like child support i thought that was based on the income of both parents not just one <laughs> not in this situation this is tyler perry land and zach rightfully flips out okay um aside from the last scene at danny's place i think damn near everything else takes place at the penthouse so Danny shows up, Gary is there, but naked, waiting for Andy, but he hides behind a bowl of lemons, and Danny is looking him over, and I'm thinking to myself, you got a whole ass white man at home, and, okay, my bad, you got a whole ass rodeo at home, and here you are looking at another man's ding -ling. so he runs to the back, oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so, um, we get Sabrina coming in, and, you know, so, I ain't gonna lie, look, Novi, look, oh, Sabrina looked good as, Good. She looked amazing in this episode. But she got on my damn nerves. I mean, I did not like Sabrina in this episode at all. And it, I, I, I don't like to hate on her like this, but I, I did not care for her at all in this episode. And I'm not cheering for Gary because 
We know he ain't shit. Okay? We all know he ain't shit. We, we know that. But this whole animosity towards him at this point is just still ridiculous because I get it, you know, when it comes to women and have their girlfriends, usually the man has to be accepted by the women, you know, in order for them to date or whatever. That's how weird it is sometimes. Other times the girlfriend doesn't care or and they just date someone and the girls just don't like them. So I do like the good continuity. Sabrina actually brings up the fact that, you know, what about when Gary squeezed her? And I'm like, <gasps> I don't think that's been mentioned since season two. Well, maybe one time in season three, but that's it. So I did like that little nod to continuity. But regardless, um, we get to a point where Gary comes out and apologizes. You know, Danny doesn't give a shit. It's like, look, you know, the penthouse, the cars and everything. You know, hell, he made up for it. And hell, he ain't touch her like that again. So he's good in my book. Danny just don't care. I actually like Danny in this episode, believe it or not. I did. It's Sabrina who got on my last nerves. Bye. Sabrina, first of all, you ain't pay for shit up in here. How are you going to tell somebody else by? The women were just disrespectful as hell in other people's houses tonight. That was my main issue. So, Gary ups and leaves. They keep talking to each other about, you know, hey, he ain't shit. So, Andy comes in, and then she's trying to spill the tea about what was happening with Karen. But then Karen comes up, and I'm like, so, Andy, why are you randomly switching you know, conversations to like paint and teal and stuff like number one, Karen knows you're lying about what you're talking about. And number two, I mean, she was on an elevator behind a closed door and Andy heard the ding. She should have just stopped talking right there and she said, oh, there she is. And that would have been it. But, you know, Karen comes in and yet again, she's acting like the victim. And then you have a lot of back and forth. Oh, you knew she. W OK, this is the part. You knew they were engaged. Yes. He only knew for, she only knew for like a couple hours. You you knew and I looked like a damn fool. Karen, you've been acting like a damn fool and looking like a damn fool for almost three seasons now the entire show. You did it to your damn self. You did. And then a lot of people pointed this out like when Karen was like Zach is the father, look at the way that Danny looked at her. Because people are like Danny knows she's lying. Does this mean Danny looked at the calendar dates after they left the hospital? Possibly. But regardless, um, yeah, so they talk about, you know, the child support thing. It's like, yeah, they're engaged too, and it's $3,000. Did you take it? And I mean, Danny was like, $3,000 a month? Damn, I need to get me a baby. <laughs> so she's like, no, and I'm not taking that because it's based on income. I want more. And then Sabrina's like, I'm proud of you, Karen, because I'm in a situation too where it's not unfair, so I want to fight, and I'm proud of you. Sabrina, shut the hell up. So... Yeah, then they all talk about drinking and shit, and that's about it. And then Sabrina begs Andy for help with Maurice. And Andy, all she had to say was, Sabrina, it took $3 million to get your ass out of jail. Robin already said the case against Maurice was weak because the voice on the recording sounded sarcastic, so we should be able to get him out easy. That's all that should have been said. Sabrina, let Maurice hang in there. I can't get any more bail, and we can beat this case. Nuff said. Also, when she was talking to um, Danny about Calvin, about how he beat someone's ass, how come she didn't mention Q's name? This was like the only time she's talked about Q without mentioning his name, which kind of like had me going, Sabrina, what the hell's wrong with you? So that's, uh, let's see here. Yeah, last scene. Danny gets home. Preston wants to talk. She doesn't want to. He gets on one knee. Where the hell is this coming from? That's it. He was on the phone with somebody though, but that's it. So that's the episode in itself. Negative three out of ten. This 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 wasn't good. It wasn't good. I didn't care for it myself, but that's just me. The promo for next week didn't do it for me either. Maybe I'll take next week off. I don't know. Well, I I, I can't do that. The channel is at two hundred seventeen percent more views than usual, so I gotta keep riding the coattails of that, and I can't be you know quitting like this even though i wish the show would take a break because this it ain't doing it for me um maybe next week will blow me out of the water i i hope i hope so because i the show needs a oomph i really did like the zach and fatima scene at the um beginning once andy and karen had left but i just feel bad for the actors because they deserve better than this in terms of writing and development because there's potential it's just not being tapped okay 
All right, well, with that being said, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. And was I was I too harsh on the episode? I Trust me, I could have been worse. But, th no. Things are just happening to happen. For what reason is Preston proposing to Danny? And then Karen... I want to be honest here. I don't think she's going to try to get more money from Zach. I just feel like she's speaking out of hurt and pain right now. That I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. Um. Yet again, we're trying to force this whole Danny vouching for Calvin. So it might hint at Sabrina and Calvin getting together. Th they don't need to be together. They, do they don't. They don't. They, they really don't. I mean, I did like when Danny at or Sabrina asked Gary. So are y'all dating? What are y'all doing? We're seeing each other. And I'm actually quite glad that question was asked because I think Gary even said to Andy, so what are we doing? Because <laughs> it's like, I don't know what the hell y'all doing either. Tyler just refuses to let Gary go. But um, yeah, that, that's all I got. This, Believe it or not, I am excited for the Hayden Tamara stuff because, hell, that's my favorite shit going on in the show right now. I never thought I'd say that, but that's my favorite thing going on in the show right now. But like and subscribe. Tell me your thoughts. I'll catch you in the next review.